Yo, what's up? This is Freethinker House update number 14. Holy crap, 14. Big number. Been here October, November, December, January, and now February going into uh, second half of February. Where are we at? Is it the second half? I don't even know what, what day it is. It's, it's February. February. Okay. February. We're rolling into February now, and we've been showing you guys the progress we've been doing. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that and then give you a little bit of insight into some of the issues that we run into being a community space. Okay, so y'all have been watching, and I've been trying to reach my goal of uh, $400 in uh, four weeks. We only made half that goal. Uh, I'm trying to do things to re-strategize, still trying to find ways to, uh, different, different types of ways to make money outside of my job. I mean, it would be easy for me to just continue on, you know, working every day, doing something I don't like and uh, I could make that money you know but the whole point of this is I don't want to do that I don't want to have to work for somebody who doesn't care about me or appreciate me I want to work a job or work for myself to where I'm doing things that are in line with what I believe so making kombucha growing microgreens we're gonna step our game up and I'm gonna keep re-strategizing reach our goal and then after that we're gonna surpass our goal this setback isn't gonna I'm not gonna let it hold me back the, the original reason I set this goal was to prove to myself and show everybody out there that it's possible to make money without working a, you know, a regular job. And it's not necessarily a failure because I still proved to myself that I can make, like the first couple of weeks I was making $100 a week. And uh, so I proved to myself that I'm capable of doing that and I'm going to continue doing that and continue getting better at that. So the garden is another aspect of the Freethinker House and we had a couple of setbacks with one with the freeze where we lost uh, a bunch of the crops and then actually with the heat now because Texas is crazy with the weather we've uh, had a, a bunch of the lettuces bolted so that has to be taken out but we went to the garden centre and bought a whole bunch of starters another hundred bucks worth so we're going to have tomatoes, a bunch more herbs, chilies and they will go in the ground this weekend. Um, we're going to organize a garden day for this weekend, so if you guys want to come out, we will post the link below in the comments. Please come out. We're going to have more kombucha. We just ordered another five gallon container or two, two and a half gallon containers to brew more. And we have a bunch more. Uh, people hitting us up with trees to come and check out, so we have four more spots, we're going to check them out this weekend as well. Uh, oranges, grapefruits, uh, there was something else in there, I can't remember, but we're going to have lots more flavours, so we're going to be hitting up Nextdoor app, uh, and as well as the Facebook page, if you guys want some kombucha this weekend, we will have it ready. I'm sad I'm going to miss the garden day, and these guys are going to be hosting an HFT meeting next week. I'm going to Mexico. By the time you're watching this, I'll be headed to Mexico uh, for the next three and a half weeks on my own adventures, and maybe I'll send some video home to put those in the updates. They're going to be holding the house down, and as Jeffrey said, doing garden days. We have an HFT meeting next Thursday night, and you can find all that info at the Freethinker House on Facebook. So we live in the Freethinker House. The three of us here live here. We pay rent. We split all the bills, and we agreed when we moved in here that our goal was to try to have a space where we could do house shows, we could do the meetings we talked about, we could do a garden, we could do everything that we want to do in the city and show people what's possible, how easy it is to become more sustainable and hopefully in the long run totally sustainable um, while still living in the city. And the space to us, it's something important, it's something that we really value, you know, not only is it where we live, but we take pride in the fact that we have this house space to give people an opportunity to come enjoy music, to raise money. So far we've raised money for Houston Stands of Standing Rock, close to $400. Uh, about 150 towards food not bombs, another 320 towards human trafficking. So close to a thousand dollars just in the, in the few months that we've been here for local causes and for local groups. We love supporting the musicians and the artists and the artwork that we have on our walls. And it's it's a fun experience, but there are also downsides to this sometimes. And we promised you guys in the beginning, in episode one, that we would show you the ups and the downs. You know, Johnny maybe not reaching his goal, and the different things that happen so that you can see what it's really like to live this uh, this lifestyle and what we're dealing with. And this past week, we've had, uh, in the past two weeks, we've had two house shows. We had one for human trafficking that we showed you a clip of last week. And we had one just this Monday that was organized by friends of ours. Um, and it was a onesie folk punk party. Everybody was running around wearing onesies. It was kind of cool, but you know, honestly, the three of us, 
were kind of worn down at this point and we weren't regretting allowing them to use our house, but we were sort of like, all right, let's get through this one. We weren't necessarily, me and Jeff were in our rooms pretty much the whole night. And this is because the last show, the human trafficking show, we included our friends Days and Days, who we love and appreciate so much. But uh, we've come to realize that they're a crowd and really this kind of, um, without generalizing and collectivizing a group of individuals, but this crowd that, you know, is more folk punk, crusty kids um, that, you know, I come from this background as well and I understand what it's like to come to house shows and to not really pay attention to where you're at. But now that we're in the space and we're providing the space and we care about the space, it's not just the house we're trying to trash. We have the garden beds out front and we have the garden in the back and we have animals here and all sorts of things that we care about. It's been difficult, we've found, to get this particular crowd to care about the things we care about as much as, you know, we would like them to. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just really upsetting when, when you open up your house to, um, to others and then, you know, we have someone, someone wrote the word fuck on my avocado plant. At the and Sharpie, on the cactus. And on the cactus, like, uh, they're throwing cigar cigarette butts in our front garden and they're uh, stepping, actually, like, literally stepping on plants and killing plants and, and I mean... It shouldn't. It shouldn't be like that, you know. I mean, we we try to open our house up to, to people, but not everyone has that mutual respect. So we're, I'm trying to find uh, ways to reach out to these people and and to make them make them kind of like get the picture, get uh, understand what what we're doing here, and understand how community is supposed to work. And, and maybe they could take that home, and maybe some people will never learn. But uh, I don't. I don't want to keep uh, providing my hard work like or the space that I worked so hard to have for people who are just gonna shit all over it I mean it's just kind of where we're at it's, and it comes it, it comes with uh, with what we're doing right now but those people acting that way aren't necessarily a part of our community and uh, you know the space is still open for everyone but we're not gonna we're not gonna be tolerating that kind of stuff anymore yeah, I think it's been, it's been a learning experience for us. Uh, we've had, what, three or four parties with the Days and Days crowd now. And at first we were selling alcohol at the first one. And uh, that was a disaster because, um, you know, there was beer cans everywhere. Uh, people just drinking way too much. You know, not because we were selling too much, but because they bring their own and uh, we just decided after that okay we're not going to sell alcohol at this event if they bring their own whatever but even with a stop in selling the alcohol they bring their own they drink way too much they fight in the streets after the show so it's kind of uh, it's kind of like we're to the point now where it is, is it even worth it to have to have that energy like Johnny was talking about, we, we sort of started to reevaluate <clears throat> and think about, well, are these people even a part of our community? Obviously, we have an open house, and this is where we hold the HFT meetings, and everyone and anyone is always welcome. Background, musical taste, whatever, wherever you come from, you're always welcome at the meetings and the things we do. And because we're so open, we do get people who maybe come in and don't necessarily understand the ideas that the three of us here, who consider ourselves you know, to be working on a daily basis to better our community and better the world and using a space as that. To some people, they're not aware of that, and maybe it's just ignorance. They don't know that this is the Freethinker House. We try to make efforts throughout the events to say, hey, by the way, you're in the Freethinker House. This is what we do here. Check out our literature. Check out the events we have coming up. But some people are coming in just, it's just another place for them to party. They don't really care whose house it is or what's going on. And I wouldn't consider those people to be a part of my community because the community that we're building and that we're a part of are people who do care, who do have compassion, and do have mutual respect, and understand for us to build a better world without corporate and state power that we have to take personal responsibility for ourselves. So that means not being a piece of shit and just like dumping stuff on someone else's lawn. I mean, I've really, in the past week, related to the house and just other events in my life, just seeing the neighborhood, and I went to the forest this past week and saw this trash all in the forest, just have really been overwhelmed and a little bit upset with uh, just how people act and how people treat the, the planet and just their surroundings and how some people seem to have no care or concern for that. And definitely seeing some of that in the house is, uh, has been an eye-opening experience. But overall, I don't think this is going to change any of the things that we're trying to do. We're still going to keep trying to invite people in and we just have to take the lessons as they come and realize that maybe not everybody's on the level that we're pursuing and hope that the people who do want to really be involved come here. Because, I mean, 
we want to make it clear that other than some of these isolated house events, all the other events that we've had have been amazing. We've got people coming out and building the gardens, people coming out to raise money for different causes with the soup events, and just a ton of other things that we're doing here where we've had great success and a really positive outcome. The meditations, the yoga, and all that stuff. It's only these isolated events where a particular crowd comes that doesn't seem to care about what we're doing. So if you do come to the Freethinker House, hopefully you can spend some time getting to know what we're about and uh, enjoy the music and maybe come back another time when we're doing other events, you know. And if not, and if this is just a place for you to party, then at least do it with respect. Where, where do you think, where can uh, that crowd come from philosophically? Honestly, I think that most of this particular energy of this crowd that we're talking about, and again, like, forgive me for collectivizing and generalizing a group of people, but based on the behavior we've seen, don't necessarily seem to be of the mind where they're concerned with like the, phil the philosophy of what we're promoting or the politics of what we're talking about. It's more like, like I said, they're just, if they have a philosophy, it's more nihilism. It's like, just fuck it, you know, these are kind of just get drunk and party, um, really, and, and I think that's just something we gotta be aware of, and maybe that's part of bringing more conscious music and, music and musicians and artists to the house so that, that their crowd who has that same mentality can follow them to the house. You know? So maybe that's something we can work on harder. And if you guys have ever been in this situation before, ever had a, a house space or just dealt with people from parts of the community not really respecting what you're doing, please be sure to comment below, uh, contact us. You can always find us on Facebook at the Freethinker House. And we're really excited about the future of what's to come. I know these guys got good things planned for February and I'll be back in a few weeks. But other than that, we just want to hopefully get you guys to think a little bit harder about what we're doing here and the potential of what's here because we don't want this to just be about elevating our lives. We want this to be a space where everybody who comes and gets involved can learn something and can, can get better, um, a better understanding of freedom and, and what, it, what it means to be a part of the community. So thank you guys for watching. Anything else? That's it. Peace. Hey, River. Peace. River. River. <laughs>